And one of the things that I messed up is this one shouldn't be set to true. Uh, sorry, that shouldn't be there. It should be true goes into that one. And then uh, this one here on slow mode, true should be going into our line trace for object. And then fault should be connecting that branch there. And one other thing that I uh, did wrong is up here, these two are going into the wrong pins. So our get world location should be going into target and get world location for the camera should be going into start. So that should be rearrange those two. So as you can see now, when we come in here and shoot, we can select our target. I don't know how well you can see, but the little crosshair is there. We'll have to get something bigger. And then it will rotate to it and then shoot at them. Okay, so for one, I would recommend changing the sprite to a bigger hitbox so you can see it. Because when we go in here and play, now that we've got it all working, you can only really see it if I get really close because it's currently set to a really small crosshair. But if I'm far away, uh, you can't see it at all. Hey, okay, so I've been uh, stuck on this for roughly an hour, which is kind of embarrassing to admit. But uh, I didn't realize that the first person character's crosshair. For whatever reason, they decide to unalign it from the center of your screen. So because of that, it's making it so that whenever we walk around and shoot, say I shoot here, I'm aiming at the chest. The actual hit of it is higher, which means that if I'm aiming here, when I release this and it shoots, I'll shoot here, but the bullet actually goes up here. So I was stuck on that and I thought for the longest time something was wrong with my code and I'd gone through it over and over and over again and there was nothing wrong with it at all. It's just for whatever reason, they have this thing here. So if you delete that, and to get to that, it's just your first person HUD that comes with it. And then once you delete that and come back in, now if I shoot, I'm aiming at his head and I move away and it aims at his head. Okay, so now that I've finished the tutorial itself, I'm going to go back over it and just explain everything in case anyone wants to edit something or misses something or doesn't quite get what was happening throughout the entire video. So we have our input action fire here, which is our keybind to shoot in this case, it's our left mouse button or mouse one. We're checking here to make sure that our ammo is greater than zero. If it is greater than zero, meaning we have some bullets in our mag, then it will check to see if slow-mo is true or false or not. If it's true, then it ray traces, getting the world location of our camera. So it gets the forward vector, so one vector, or one, one unit, in the x-axis, times us that by 5,000 to make it 5,000, and then adds it to our world location, so that wherever our character is, it then adds 5,000 to it, and that's our end, and then whatever the location of our camera is, it's our start point for the... Uh, line trace and then we search for anything that is a pawn so if you have an enemy that you want to be able to hit you have to make sure that it is a pawn on the collision so if we go here you can see that my collision preset is pawn so any enemy you have the collision preset has to be pawn for this to work it then breaks the hit result and then it gets the location of it and then it makes sure that the relative location then spawns our billboard component which by default is S actor, which is a little T Rex looking thing. And then attaches it to it so that if our character moves around, or any moves around, not that it does, it then keeps it on it and it makes sure it's visible and makes sure that it's not hidden in game. And then we change it to our little crosshair. You can change this to whatever you want. So whatever you want to display where the hit is stored, you set it here. In this case, we have a crosshair, but it's just so small that it's hard to see sometimes. We then add that hit object to our array and then. This thing here, it just checks to see if our ammo is zero. If it is zero, then it releases all of our shots straight away. Because if we're in our slow motion mode, we don't want to be able to continuously be in slow motion if we have no ammo. And then here, it's just setting our spawn location for the projectile. So with our shoot function here, it plays our montage, which plays the animation. It spawns the object in and it plays a sound, but it doesn't tell it where to spawn the object. So to do that, we then set that here, so we get our sphere from the get world location, which is a little sphere at the end of the gun here. It then adds that with our gun offset, which is just where our gun is positioned relative to our player. And then it gets the world location from the first person camera, combines the two, and then adds that to our get world location of the sphere, and that gives us our location. And then we get our get world rotation from our first person camera, and then connect that here in our shoot function, which then tells it where to spawn. We then have our reload here, so it just sets the ammo to 6 every time we press R. And then slow-mo, whenever we're holding down shift, it sets slow-mo to true. And uh, 
puts the time dilation to 0 0.2, so it plays at one fifth speed, then it sets up post process, which is that like brownish red effect that you see. And then once we release it, it then fires all of our shots and plays our release shots event that we set up down here. So for the release shots to work, uh, I didn't show this, but I just wrote down a comment here. But for our release shots to work, it checks to see if slow-mo is true, and it checks to see if releasing shots is not true, and if both of those things are met, then it sets this to true, and then upon doing that, it sets releasing shots to true. And then we get our hit array, we get a copy of it, and then we make sure that it's a valid one. We then set our get world location of whichever object it was that was stored in our array. And then we get to our find looker rotation, and then we compare this location to our first person camera rotate, uh, sorry, location. And then by doing that, the engine does some mass and then spits out a rotation value for us. And then we then set that to our target rotation. And then using that, we come into here on our smooth rotation function, we get the player controller, because again, you can only set rotations for your player inside of the player controller. And then we set that as our current one. And we get our target rotation, which is the rotation between our player and the enemy we shot. And then we make it so that it rotates between this. Now, increasing or decreasing this number will change how quickly or slowly it pans when it moves between targets. So having it at 50 will make it faster, but if you were to set it at something like 5, it would be really slow. And then if we come back into here, you can see that we now get our player controller and get the rotation. And we compare those two to make sure that it's at least within 1 uh, degree. If it is, then it'll set this branch here to true. Now this branch is on an event tick firing every tick, and it checks our hit array length, make sure that it is uh, less than zero, or sorry, make sure that it is greater than zero. If it is greater than zero, then it checks to see if releasing shots is true. If that's true, then it then plays our smooth rotation function, which is this here. It then sets a delay of 0.2. If you don't have this delay, It'll make it so that whenever you shoot, it'll shoot a shitload of bullets because the event tick fires out an event so quickly that you end up with like a hundred of them a second. So you have to have a delay there so it has a chance to catch up. Now, when this returns back is true, it would then make our shoot function play, which will spawn a bullet down here. And this is the same thing we explained up here again earlier, which was just here, except the difference is that it compares the two uh, locations to get a rotation for it to set which direction it should be fired in. And then we destroy the component, which is the billboard on it, and then we remove it from our array so it's no longer stored, and then we give it a delay of 0.1 seconds, and then we loop all the way back from our delay all the way into our is valid again, which then just continuously does this function over and over again until our array returns with no more things in it, and then it will stop doing it until our sh release shots is called upon again. Uh, and I think that's it. If there's anything you guys are stuck on in this tutorial and need help with, let me know down below in the comments. I know that this tutorial might be a bit uh, clunky when I have the greatest flow because I got stuck on a couple things because this took me so long to make that I actually made all of this stuff about a week ago and then just recently, maybe three days ago, made this and then only just earlier today I managed to actually get it working properly. So things uh, kind of got left down in my mind and I forgot little details and had to go over them again so you might see too many cuts in certain episodes but hopefully it shouldn't be a problem. But anyway if you have any other ideas for videos you want to see in the future where I recreate recreate different game mechanics let me know down below in the comments but other than that that's all for this episode so uh, see ya.